You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. is Maximize Retirement with your host, Sharon Rolfe. Sharon inspires, collaborates, and motivates you to repurpose your skills with the potential to generate expansive possibilities. Her optimistic perspective and interactions incite a creative synergy. So please welcome the host of Maximize Retirement, Sharon Rolfe. I'm your host, Sharon Rolfe, and you're listening to Maximize Retirement coming to you on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Time is too slow for those who wait, too swift for those who fear, too long for those who grieve, too short for those who rejoice. But for those who love, time is eternity. A Henry Van Dyke poem. We are here to inspire possibilities and purpose in retirement. I'm a retirement coach and conduct what do I want to do in retirement workshops. And I have a website called effortlessvitality.org. And I like to start my show with a gratitude moment. So today I'm grateful for the sun coming out. And uh, we, we've been having a lot of cloudy days here. I love how the sun makes things grow. And um, I'm uh, gr- grateful for uh, cars and being able to go places. And um, at the same time, also grateful for clouds because they help keep us cool and create an interesting sky. So my guest today is Dave Tietzel, and Dave, what are you grateful for? Well, I'm grateful for being being able to live in a beautiful community like Edmonds, Washington, where we're close to uh, the salt water, and uh, we have a beautiful view of the mountains that are snow-capped this time of year, and uh, just living in a great environment, and uh, it's just a great place to live in a great community. Yes, uh, I often consider myself blessed because of the great scenery we have here. So um, audience, today's topic is serving opportunities in politics and government. One of my guests uh, way back about uh, session nine, I think it was, said that he had never gotten involved in politics in um, until he was given an opportunity to give some feedback to, or input to a political viewpoint and has since made uh, uh, a goal every year to go to his state government capital and um, and get involved, just even listening. So uh, I hope that that's the kind of the foundation of where I'm starting from today. So Dave... Uh, Tietzel likes to sail and hike and travel. He graduated from college and had a 35-year degree uh, career in the telephone industry. I had 19 years in the telephone industry. He's active in the Rotary Club and was elected to our city council four years ago, 2015. And in that role, he serves on several committees, uh, and an advisory board for his university. And he's lived here 32 years with his wife, and they have two daughters. So tell us who Dave really is and where you came from as such, Dave. Well, sure. Let me just give you a bit of background about myself. Uh, 
first of all, I'm 66 years young, and uh, I do qualify as, as being a senior citizen these days and get the uh, discount at the movie theater, which I thoroughly enjoy. Uh, but I was born in uh, Tacoma, which is about 30 miles south of Seattle, and I'm the oldest of four brothers, and I'm proud to say I'm the only one in our family who attended college, and I, I did do that. Attended Washington State University in 1974, graduated in 1974, and I met my future wife there, uh, Kathy. Uh, my wife, Kathy, recently retired, so now she's got some additional time. She's looking for other opportunities to invest her time in our community. Uh, we've been married about 44 years, so uh, wow. coming up on our 50-year anniversary fairly shortly, so we're proud to say that. Uh, we do have two daughters, as you mentioned. One is married, was married last August down in Nashville, Tennessee. My youngest is getting married this May down in Santa Barbara, California, so two out-of-state weddings. So we're excited about that. Uh, we also, in addition to our two daughters, we have two dogs, uh, so we're dog people. Uh, no grandkids yet, although we're, we're looking forward to that day, and that will take up some more of our time, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, as, as you mentioned, Sharon, uh, I did retire after 35 years with the phone company, and that was Quest Communications at that time, which has since been purchased by CenturyLink, and I'm sure you're familiar with CenturyLink. In my career at the phone company, I retired as Director of Public Policy, and I had responsibility for 14 state territory uh, during that time and uh, enjoyed that uh, that career there. Uh, during my career, when my kids were younger, and I'm sure a lot of folks listening today can relate to this, I was very busy with my career as I moved up the corporate ladder. Uh, my career took more and more time. Raising uh, two young daughters took a lot of time, and I really didn't have a lot of time to focus on or really dig into the local political scene. And I have found that uh, since I retired, I have been able to spend more time uh, getting educated and learning more, and uh, and that kind of piqued my interest in uh, in that area. So uh, that's just a brief bit about me. So again, I'm a true Puget Sounder. I've lived my entire life virtually within about a 35 mile uh, radius, which may sound a bit boring, but again, I love this area. I love the Puget Sound region. <laughs> uh, lo love the sound. Love the mountains. We love to hike and be outside and be on the water. So it's just a wonderful place to live. So, Dave, was there any gap between when you left your career and when you got into politics? Uh, yes, I retired in 2008, so there was a bit of a gap in time there. And oh. uh, it, 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 as many of your listeners would appreciate, uh, you develop a to-do list while you're working, and there are things you typically don't do or can't get done due to time constraints. And we moved in that intervening period and remodeled our new place, and I did a lot of that work myself, so I do enjoy carpentry um, and just got a lot of the to do things done off that checklist. And mm -hmm. at the end of that period of time, I started looking around and thinking, you know, I'm not an old man yet and I've still got energy and good health. And uh, how can I get involved and contribute in a, in a greater way? So uh, mm -hmm. that's that's brought that's brought me to the current current point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I actually started coaching school just the week before I retired. So I I didn't quite have the stretch in between like you did where you're finishing projects you wanted to do. Um, but uh, the, I did after, after you get all the paperwork for Social Security and insurance and Medicare and all that stuff, I started – looking around and say, well, how do I determine that my day is well spent? You know, um, we don't have to be productive anymore, but there's something about feeling that a day is well spent, right? Exactly true. And when you have good health and uh, your mental faculties are sharp, uh, uh, you do start feeling the urge to contribute in a certain mm -hmm. way as a retiree. And mm -hmm. all of us are living longer these days due to better nutrition, better health care. And, uh, you know, at, at age 65 or so, you might expect to have 30 years left. And mm -hmm. uh, how you spend those years is something that needs to be considered. Very, very important. And that's kind of why I'm here, because I want to wake people up to all the possibilities um, in retirement. So, uh mm -hmm. I I had uh, uh, the first week at coaching school, they they had us define ourselves by our personal essence, our quintessence, and that really helped me focus my, you know, productive days. So, mm -hmm. all right. 
And I, and I think it's important to note that, you know, it's not just uh, politics that could be considered. There's many, many things could, could be done oh, in yeah. retirement. Again, every, everyone's going to find their own way. Yeah. And that's why I'd start with what do I want to do in retirement workshop. So when we come back, we're going to uh, share a question with our audience and uh, see where Dave is headed next because uh, he's um, not going to run for election again. So stay tuned. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom who's done it for over 50 years evelyn stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of pennsylvania president and founder of big heart bridges her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing transportation and employment Ms. Dupula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. This is Sharon Rolfe, and you are listening to Maximize Retirement on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I have my guest, Councilman Dave Tietzel here. And um, we want to engage our audience, you guys, to uh, question, to call in. The number to call is 877-475-8570. And the question is, after retirement... Is it more useful to donate time or money to help the less fortunate? And uh, we'll see what Dave says about that a little bit later on. But right now, Dave, um, how and why did you decide to get involved in local politics? Well, thanks for that question. Um, Yeah, as I mentioned uh, before the break, everyone's got to, I think, consider their particular circumstances, their skill sets, and where they are in their life, and figure out where they can plug in uh, in the best fashion that may help or contribute to their local community. So in my case, after I retired, I found I had more time to start really digging into and paying attention to what's happening here locally in our community. I started following our uh, local city council's progress and uh, discovered that I wasn't really satisfied with the process, uh, the divisiveness I was seeing on council, and felt that I had some characteristics I could bring to the table that would be useful and uh, and contribute in a positive way. Uh, I actually felt a calling. I'm a man of faith, and I felt a calling to contribute on council, felt I could make a difference. As I mentioned in the introduction, I was a public policy director, worked with the state regulatory agencies throughout a 14-state territory, so I was familiar with Mm -hmm. uh, the legislative process and felt I could bring that to the table. So I thought that was going to be a a good fit for me. And it turns out that it has been a good, Uh, I can also contribute through the city council process uh, in terms of leadership and uh, solid principles. And I think those are very important in government uh, these days. So um, again, I, I think, Politics is a good way to actually make a difference in a positive way for the community. You can uh, talk to your constituents, get a lot of input that way, bring what you know personally to the table and uh, 
and and blend that together in making good decisions that that help our community move forward. We've got mm-hmm. a lot of challenges here locally from a environmental perspective, from a a growth perspective. Uh, we're expected to add about five thousand more residents here over the next uh, ten years or so. So we need to figure out ways to house them appropriately without creating too much congestion on our streets and roadways and uh, neighborhoods, uh, how we address the homelessness situation, which we do have here in Edmonds, as many citizens, c- cities are dealing mm-hmm. with. So mm-hmm. there, are, there are many, many issues to work through, and it's important to have uh, you know, well-informed council members and those that will dig into the issues and, and, and make proper decisions for the city. So those things all kind of brought me to, uh, uh, to, this, to this path. Sounds like you have to be a really good listener and a really good question asker, right? <laughs> well, that's true, and I think that is important. In terms of my personal gifts, I think I am a good listener, uh, and I think uh, collaboration is a term I like to refer to. Oh, collaboration, yeah. I think, is, is something we need to see in government up and down the chain from local to county to state and to federal, and I think we're all seeing that there's not enough civility, not enough, not enough collaboration in terms mm-hmm. of how we work together within the mm-hmm. city and with our constituents uh, to, to make productive change happen. So that's one thing we can focus on, I think. And again, mm-hmm. I did mention I have a policy background and that uh, that's a, a strength here and a gift that I've got that I can mm-hmm. bring to the table. Plus, as I mentioned, I've lived here since the mid 80s in this community. So I know our city well. I know what uh, people here like, what they don't like, what their goals are. And I think being connected well to the community is a gift you can you can bring and leverage. make sure that yeah. That, that, yeah, yeah, leverage all that into making good decisions. But again, I think the most important thing is to try to bridge divides. Don't fall into the tribalism we're seeing here at the local, state, and federal level. But try to bridge divides, come up with good solutions, good compromises that make sense. And I think we need more of that. Yeah, and problem solving, I, I don't know that compromise has been um, or talked about that much, but uh, I I have a certification in knowledge management, and it's how, how I would see that entering in here is um, if you put what you know out on the table, and I put what I know out on the table about a subject, then the potential of creating new knowledge happens. I mean, the condition is there. And I know probably you can relate to when I started my career, uh, you you kind of protected what you were ex- expert at because after all, if if you shared your, you know, tribal, no- your personal knowledge uh, too readily, they might not need you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so holding that close to your, your, you know, protecting yourself, but those days are long gone, folks. <laughs> I think that's right. And, you know, when you think about it, you know, we really are a team, you know, we in the city, uh, we have several, seven council members here. We need to be functioning as a team. And we also need to be functioning as a team with the city administration, the mayor and his staff. And also the third leg of that stool is our citizen base. So if we can all pull together in the same direction, we get a lot done. If we work mm-hmm. against one another and fall into the device, divisiveness trap, nothing productive gets done. So that needs to be a focus. So I think collaboration, teamwork, respect, civility, those things mm-hmm. are all important to uh, put into practice here at the local level and, again, up the layers of government all the way to the federal level, in my opinion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you've talked a little bit about your strengths and gifts. Do you, does your passion and purpose play into this, Dave? It definitely does. And again, I felt a calling to serve my community uh, in a meaningful way. And that led me to the city uh, council uh, role. And I do have a passion to serve. Um, I don't do this for personal credit or glory in any way. Uh, I do it because I I feel a need and a want to contribute to my community and make it a better place to live and work. And uh, I'm hoping that I've been successful in that uh, endeavor over these past three years. And as you mentioned, I've got one more year to serve in my term and uh, I plan to uh, uh, finish well and Mm -hmm. make sure I make positive change happen over this final year as well. Mm -hmm. So um, the, when we think about, 
um, being advice to boomers out there, um, there is a lot of things from your career that looking around, where would you like to make a difference? I feel like my radio show is making a difference. And um, that really plays into our, you know, whatever it is that you have uh, would feel like would be a strong contribution probably hooks into your passion and purpose. And that's what we want to stimulate you to. So when we come back, I think that's right. We're going to talk to Dave a little more about uh, what's it like being a city council member. Okay, stay tuned. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Psychologist, master certified coach, and CEO of the executive and organizational development firm True North Leadership, Dr. Relly Nadler brings his expertise in emotional intelligence to keynotes, consulting, coaching, and training. He is the author of Leader's Playbook and Leading with Emotional Intelligence that lays out tips and tools for effective leadership. Dr. Nadler has designed multi day executive boot camps for high achievers in Fortune 500 companies and has coached CEOs, presidents and their staff and developed and delivered innovative leadership programs for such organizations as Anheuser-Busch, BMW, MCI, EDS, DreamWorks Animation, the U.S. Navy and Vanguard Health Systems. To learn more and get your free iPhone app highlighting his tools with videos, leadership keys, visit www.truenorthleadership.com today. You are listening to Maximize Retirement on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I'm Sharon Rolfe with my guest, Councilman Dave, today. And we're talking about um, serving opportunities in politics and government. And our question again today for you to um, participate is, after retirement, is it more useful to donate time or money to help the less fortunate? So, Dave, you started to say something before we went to break. Do you remember what that was? Yeah, in terms of uh, uh, focusing on uh, what your passions are after retirement, again, uh, my passions drew me to uh, serving through the city council uh, role uh, because I felt that I could uh, leverage my background and my interests and uh, mm-hmm. uh, again, my, my, my depth of uh, knowledge of the city well in that kind of a role, and I think that has been uh, uh, a good fit for me. So it's been Mm -hmm. a very positive experience. Mm -hmm. So what's particularly challenging about being a city council member? Well, I will tell you that being in government at any level is not for the faint of heart. (laughs) (laughs) And I I knew that going in. Um, I I have as a council member uh, with several years tenure now found that uh, managing intra-council conflict can be a challenge. We are seven very, very different individuals with seven very strong personalities and Mm -hmm. trying to get to uh, a a consensus on issues in a respectful way is sometimes challenging. I think we have made progress in that regard. I would say that we're not perfect yet in that regard and there's progress to be made. But that is a challenge and can you just be a challenge? I think uh, uh, that's true at every level of government. It's not just limited to city council. Mm. I think uh, in terms of working through directional differences between the council and the mayor's staff, uh, at the council level, we are legislators. We set policy. We are not uh, the executive branch. That is the mayor and his staff. And sometimes that line gets blurred where 
we on council feel that we want to uh, make things happen and uh, and call out uh, executive action, and that's really not our role. So making sure that we keep that bright line in mind and not stray over that line can be a bit of a challenge, and I think we're doing better in that regard. But once again, we have not arrived at the finish line there yet. And I think another challenge would be meeting the expectations for our constituents. Um, one thing that we find is that our constituents want to be safe uh, from a police and fire perspective. They want good streets and sidewalks in her city. They want our wastewater treatment plant to be top, uh, operating at, at peak efficiency at all times. Uh, they want good parks. Um, they want good transportation options, good housing options. So there's a lot of issues that our constituents expect of us. And part of the problem with that is we do our very best to address all of those needs and, and interests. But as you would understand, uh, I think at both the local and federal and state level, there's never enough money to cover all those interests mm-hmm. and, and desires. And so prioritization of our available funding is a real challenge. And mm-hmm. we deal with that every year in the budget cycle. And then mid-year, we often have budget amendments to try to address additional requirements to come up. Uh, during the year. So budgeting is a, is a real challenge all the way up the line, even when the economy is healthy as it is now, because mm-hmm. there, believe me, there is never, never enough money to cover everything. Once again, that's not limited to Edmond City Council. That's all the way up to the federal level. Um, and then I would say that a challenge is, uh, as a council member, is having a thick skin. Because one thing I've learned is that almost every decision we make at the council level is criticized by someone. <laughs> it, it is not possible. <laughs> it is not possible to satisfy all of our constituents. You, we can do the best we can at trying to address as much of the need as we possibly can, but it's never quite enough. So we do get criticized in uh, social media and our local media from time to time. And I would say that in some cases I feel that's not warranted because we are doing the very very best we can. But it does require a bit of a thick skin because it is just simply not possible to satisfy everyone. So those are some of the challenges that uh, (laughs) that do occur to me. And uh, once again, I need to say, just to be fair, it's not just uh, limited to our city council. That's all the way up the level, levels of government to the federal level. Yeah, there's probably a pretty thin line between trying to show respect and listening to then also realize you can't please everybody. You know, if wishes were fishes, we'd have a belly full. Um, mm-hmm. to, to, to re not get too thick skinned that you're not responsive, I guess maybe is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's right. And we need to be responsive. We need to listen and accept all the input. And uh, what you need to do as a local government official is take all the input whether it's positive, negative, or neutral, and blend that all together uh, in the decision process and try to end end the process with the best decision for the city, both in the short, short and the long term. Because yeah, sometimes the decisions, decisions may be good for the short time, short term, but not for the long term. So mm-hmm. it requires a, a fair amount of discernment to blend all that together and uh, then work with your fellow council members to, uh, uh, to arrive at the right place. So let's um, propose a question here about does the local politics need all skills, talents, and perspectives, Dave? I definitely think we do. And uh, on council right now, again, we have seven very different people from very different backgrounds. And uh, uh, it is important to bring all those skills and all those backgrounds to the table and listen to all the input uh, from all of your constitu- uh, your counterparts on council and learn. And it's important to keep an open mind and be a good listener and make sure you understand where people are coming from when they have a strong opinion about a certain issue. So without that kind of diversity of opinion, you would have um, uh, a very bland form of government. It's, it's important mm. that there be passion and diversity brought to the table so we can get mm. To, uh, to a good place, and uh, I think, uh, as they say, sometimes the old uh, the old saying is sometimes uh, be 
being in governments like making sausage is not pretty to watch, but the end result is pretty good. <laughs> and, <laughs> I like that. And, and so I, and, and so, I, so I think that's where we are at city government. We have a lot of different opinions. They get ground together. In the end, I think normally we make good decisions for the city. Mm-hmm. So um, this might have to be a brief uh, answer before we go to our break, but are, what kinds of skills are really lacking in politics or voices that aren't normally heard, Dave? Well, I think just very quickly, one very important point is we need to make sure we're drawing input from all of our constituents. Uh, our citizen base is growing more diverse over time, and we're not often hearing from all of the population segments here in our city. We need to do more outreach to make sure we hear those voices and are responding to them. That's a very important one to me. So that's still facing you as to how to solve that, huh? That's correct. And again, we're aware of it. We're working on more outreach, but uh, we're having some success. There's more to be done. Okay. So when we come back, we're going to talk to Dave about if see if he has other interests that might uh, help us know him more and identify with uh, where he uh, is at in retirement. So t- stay tuned. If you're a person caring for someone living with dementia, then this program is for you. It's designed for families and friends coping with the challenges of caregiving. The foundation of care, Susan Kohler believes, is communication. Innovative Dementia Care with Susan Kohler provides strategies to keep the lines of communication open between you and your loved one, increase quality interactions, decrease the burden of daily care for you, the caregiver. Join Susan, 11 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network. Susan and her guests will share techniques so you can facilitate your loved one's ability to safely follow your instructions, participate in daily activities, and express daily wants and desires. To learn positive solutions, creative ideas, and practical strategies that will build a healthy foundation of care. You are listening to Maximize Retirement, and this is Sharon Rolfe on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio with a congressman or councilman, uh, lo- locally in my area, Dave here. And um, we, uh, our question that we're posing to you today to comment. Uh, on is after retirement is it more useful to donate time or money to help the less fortunate because we're all kind of facing this homeless situation around uh, our nation and uh, Dave do you have a a answer to that yourself? Well uh, yeah I think it, it depends on your personal circumstances if you're blessed to have time and money obviously those things all help but if, uh, if, if money is not uh, forthcoming, then I think certainly everyone's got some time they can donate to help. And I think everyone can get plug, plugged in one way or another to help the community. So it's just a matter of assessing your personal situation and, uh, and being engaged in the best way you can. So you're kind of saying both and don't let one stop you from doing the other? That's correct. Ah, you're not off the hook then. <laughs> um, okay, so what other ways, Dave, are you involved in our community? Well, for me personally, as you can tell, service is very uh, important to me. And uh, so I'm a member of our local Evans Rotary Club, and Rotary is a great uh, way to be involved from a service perspective. At the local level, uh, we uh, – uh, work on providing scholarships for youth here in our community. We uh, are a partner with the Burn Children's Foundation and help uh, kids that have experienced fairly severe uh, severe burns uh, get healthy. We uh, do a lot of donation for clothes for kids for keep uh, you know young kids that need help uh, getting uh, good clothing for school. Uh, we do local street cleanups and on and on and on. So it's a great way to be involved locally in the community through a club service organization. At the international level, Rotary also does some good things. They uh, partner with the Gates Foundation to eliminate diseases like polio and malaria. We Mm. work on uh, providing clean water solutions for Africa. Uh, We're working on providing uh, 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 teaching uh, trade skills to underprivileged uh, women in Thailand currently. 
So we have a fairly broad reach that we uh, we focus on, and just it's a very good service focus. And I'm privileged to be a part of that organization. Um, I've also served as a commissioner on the local historic preservation commission. Um, Edmonds has a long history. We recently celebrated our 125th uh, centennial here, and so our history goes back over 100 years here in town. Unfortunately, we're losing a lot of our old historic buildings and places to development as time goes by. Mm-hmm. And so we need to make sure we try to hang on to some of the, the heritage that we have here so we can celebrate structures that still do exist. So we can all go and admire and touch, you know, touch our history here. So I'm um, mm-hmm. a strong supporter of history here locally. Mm-hmm. I also volunteer with the Nourishing Network, which is a local organization who helps to provide good nourishing food to kids that may be underprivileged and don't have access to good nutrition at home in the evenings and weekends. So we do uh, uh, food deliveries uh, to help uh, kids in that situation. And I'm also active through my church in various uh, uh, various ways. So those are a few ways I'm involved, and I plan to continue to be involved uh, even beyond my council member days uh, in those sorts of uh, activities. Mm-hmm. Good, good. Quite extensive list there, Dave. Well, um, I try to. And again, it's a matter of just having a heart to serve and plugging in yeah. where you think you can help. And I think that's what I try to do. Have you done any international uh, service trips? I have not yet. In fact, that's one thing that's on my wife and my list. Uh, we have not actually traveled internationally other than to Mexico. So we want to get to Europe, want to get to Africa, the Holy Land. Places like that, and and connect there with the pro, with the uh, with the culture in those areas, and figure out how how we can make a difference. So it's an opportunity to learn and see how we can get plugged mm-hmm. in that way as well. Yeah, learning is pretty important uh, in retirement. It keeps us young, as is what I always say. So, so you well, are. It sure does, the, and yeah, go ahead. It, it sure does, and you've heard people say before that you know the older you get, the less you feel you know, and I think that's true in my case. So. I think you're never too old to learn. I think we should be lifelong learners, and uh, that's my that's my goal. Good. Well, one of my um, first guests was um, uh, wrote the book "Smiling at the World," and she did a year's worth of international travel doing community service. So, I think that's um, in my archives, either uh, the third or fourth. Um, a show so that might interest you those that are listening and day two so mm, um so, yeah so y- any other plans that you're making for your future well uh, again since i am retired now and uh, will be uh, no longer serving on council past this year uh, my wife also retired recently within the last year so now she has time And we would like to, uh, again, experience the world and get some traveling done. Uh, Neither of us have been to Europe or to Africa or to Asia. So we want to get there and while we still can and experience those things as a couple. So I think we can deepen our relationship and uh, also learn more about uh, other cultures in the world uh, in that way. So we look forward to that and, again, looking for ways to plug in and and serve in that fashion. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so, um, yeah, we're fortunate. Uh, Rick Steves is another member of our community, so we have a lot of resources through his office in traveling, and he loves to learn and help us learn about other other uh, cultures, too. So uh, another big resource for both learning and doing in other countries. So when we come back, we'll see hear about any nuggets Dave has for the Us Baby Boomers. So stay tuned. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. 
Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. You are listening to Maximize Retirement on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I'm Sharon Rolfe with my guest today, Councilman Dave. And the number to call in to participate with us in our conversation is 877-475-8570. And um, Dave, let's talk about how baby boomers could contribute to their communities in ways they might have never considered. Got any thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, I do. As I mentioned earlier, I think uh, when you think about everybody, we're all unique. We all all have unique sets of talents and skills. And so I think as you move into retirement years, it's important to take a a self-assessment of what you have, what you can bring to the table. And as you have more time in retirement, uh, try to think of how uh, how you can make a difference, how you can plug in and uh, use those unique uh, skills and talents that, that we all have in a positive way. And I think uh, serving, is just a, it's just a great way to stay engaged. I think it, it benefits the community, certainly, but also it benefits the person donating uh, his or her time uh, in a, in a, in a volunteer type of type way keeps you sharper, keeps you healthier. I think it's just a mutually beneficial thing. So uh, I, I think service is just a wonderful thing uh, for the community and for the person, uh, person serving as well. Uh, so again, that's, that's on my heart. That's uh, been driving me since I retired and I it will continue to drive me as long as I'm able to do it. So, Places that they may have never considered might be more focused to family or young people or um, disabled people or homeless. Um, I think I think our whole world needs more listeners and more love and more people who uh, care. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, I totally agree. And again, in terms of serving. You know, I've been drawn to the political realm uh, as a way to provide uh, support to my community uh, through service, but that's not the only way to do it. There are many, many ways to serve your community. We have service clubs. Uh, As we mentioned earlier, there's clubs like Rotary out there that are certainly great, but that's not the only one. There are many. A lot of church activities, churches are involved uh, in a lot of great uh, activities here locally. I know that the faith community is heavily involved in supporting the homeless here, both mm-hmm. in Edmonds and in neighboring communities here. So uh, certainly there's a lot of efforts going on there that uh, can be done by way of outreach to that, uh, uh, that population segment. We have a lot of local boards and commissions here in Edmonds. I mentioned the Historic Preservation Commission that I've served on. That's only one of many, and uh, there's great opportunities there to serve and contribute in that way. We have a lot of well, environmental and, causes here. Go ahead, Sharon. Well, and you mentioned that you serve on your university advisory board? Yes, I graduated from Washington State University, and I'm on the dean's advisory board for the College of Arts and Sciences. And uh, so you can be involved through your, your college or any uh, educational uh, institutions you may be associated with in that fashion as well. And that's always very appreciated uh, by those uh, by those groups. I was starting to mention also we have a lot of environmental issues here locally. Uh, salmon recovery is very important in the Puget Sound area. 
And we're doing a lot of work in that regard here in terms of stream restoration in Edmonds. And there's a lot of volunteer efforts going on to restore streams to the level that they can support salmon. And salmon, as you know, are a popular feedstock for our local orca population, which is struggling. So there's a lot of opportunity in the environmental realm for things like that. And I think importantly, uh, one thing that's been on my heart here lately is um, is boating. It sounds like a very simple thing. It's a right that we all have. Unfortunately, only about half of the population here that is registered in Snohomish County boats. And that's critical to be an, an informed voter, take the time to be informed, take the time to make an educated vote so we can make a difference that way. So I think that's just a small thing we can all do, but it is so important to be involved in the process. So baby boomers and those retired, you know, we often are prompted to spend a lot of time uh, investing for our future, you know, money. But we're kind of talking today, folks, about investing our time. That's really where the... uh, situation where the it adds meaning and purpose to our lives the the it, being involved in things that matter to us because there's it puts us in relationship with other people who might in fact feel the same way we do or maybe not but that whole investing your time attention and uh, resources of um, helping out does make a difference it all counts and it's amazing what we can do together that collaboration i think just think is kind of magical i think of it as synergism and um synergy is is um you know one and one equals three where where we're developing something bigger than ourselves and how cool is that I think that's definitely right. I think, you know, if, if you have resource, financial resources, it's fairly easy to write a check, and that's important and appreciated. But if you can donate time, again, you, you create personal relationships that last. And I think, uh, you know, investing time, whether it be through a volunteer organization or through politics or through a school, whatever it might be, it does create relationships and makes the community fabric stronger. And so I definitely do think that uh, time investment is, is really critical. Well, and I'm noticing, I don't know if it's just in our community, but I've been starting to be aware of how our city is actually asking the, the faith church uh, um, <laughs> population. Uh, they're actually asking the faith co- people uh, audience to help them solve some of their problems and that shows respect and um, I think broadening their perspective on where is the help coming can the help come from I think that's right and you know one example of that is the homeless issue and the faith community has stepped up locally here and done great work in helping serve that population and I'm I'm not proud to say the city has not done enough yet uh, and it's not wow. fair to, re- to rely just on the faith community to, to meet that need uh, we can and should be doing more, and we are in the process of working on that now. So uh, it's, it's a matter of partnering and making sure we leverage what we all bring to the table between the faith community, our local government, the county and state level, to uh, to help bring solutions to the homeless problem. Mm-hmm. It's a very difficult problem, and we're all dealing with it. Uh, you see it uh, in a big way in cities like Seattle and Everett. But we're not mm-hmm. immune here locally. So we Edmonds, yeah. Linwood, Mount Lake Terrace, nearby communities need to band together and make sure we address it effectively and well in partnership with the faith community. Well, thank you for listening. When we come back, we'll uh, ask Dave to wrap up with some closing thoughts and advice. So stay tuned. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like... 
I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. This is Sharon Rolfe with my guest, Councilman Dave, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and you're listening to Maximize Retirement. We've covered a lot of ground uh, about um, ways that boomers can be serving in their politics or government. And um, Dave, how would you like to, what closing thoughts do you have or stories um uh, things that you found rewarding in doing what you're doing. Okay, well, I'll just uh, provide a stream of consciousness here for a moment. But uh, <laughs> we've talked uh, earlier today about uh, uh, you know have a pa- having a passion for something, and as boomers move into retirement years, and I'm I'm in that category, it's a matter of identifying what my passions are and figuring out how I can plug in to serve and to give back, and. Uh, as I've thought about this, I've thought about the saying that we all know it's better to give than to receive. I think mm-hmm. that saying is true, and it's something that we can take to heart. Uh, when you're able to give resources, whether they be financial resources or time, as we talked, uh, it really gives you a warm feeling inside that you have given something meaningful to make your community a better place and to enrich other people's lives. And so I think. One way to give is to volunteer, uh, volunteer your time. Volunteering to me is not a matter of doing something to get a thank you in return. It's volunteering because it's the right thing to do. It's, it's, it's serving your community and doing something in a positive way. So, uh, I think, uh, again, for me, this is all translated to serving through city council for these, uh, this four year period. Uh, for others, it might mean something else, but I think it's important that we all determine what our passions are and how we can uh, make best use of the talents that we're given uh, to to help those around us. Yeah, my mom used to say, um, when you help someone else or give to someone else, you, they get blessed, but so do we, you know, personally. So it goes both directions that I don't know it seems like somehow we've kind of forgotten that Mm -hmm. I think that's right and again it's important to keep in mind that during our retirement years especially the early retirement years we have the gift of age on our side we're still young enough to be vital both physically and mentally and we have time to help uh, time that's not available when you're busy with your career and raise, raising a family. So, again, mm-hmm. it's a matter of identifying your passion, matching that up to the time available, and figuring out to plug in. Mm-hmm. Because uh, you you will be have so much of a richer life and a meaningful life and probably even happier life <laughs> than when you're giving from your heart. And that's what I we're really that's talking right. about. 
Yeah. I think that's right. And it's a way, I think, to stay mentally engaged and that keeps you sharper. It keeps you physically engaged. It just helps your overall health and perspective. So there's a benefit to the person serving as well as those receiving the benefit of receiving. that service. Receiving, so. yeah. Okay, so Dave can uh, is willing to uh, respond to anybody's inquiry at his email, Kathy. Dave52 at hotmail.com. And that's Kathy with a Y. C no is K-A-T-H-Y Dave D A V E 52 at Hotmail.com. And uh, my website, if you're interested in finding out more about retirement coaching, is effortlessvitality.org. And on my website, I I have some um, fabric art that is for sale on the Etsy store, Quilted Petunia. Next week, our guest will be Ashton Applewhite, and our topic is Attitudes About Aging. And she she actually has a TED Talk. I don't know if you know about TED Talks, but they're really quite a great resource to find out from people who are experts. And uh, I'm looking forward to our conversation with Ashton Applewhite. Could be a little bit controversial, but uh, like Dave, you, you sometimes dive in and listen and uh, collaborate, right? I really enjoyed this, and uh, I would just encourage everyone to assess where they are in their life and in their retirement years and plug in. Well, thank you for Dave. Uh, he's given us a lot to think about, and uh, everybody needs to invest in their future and give back. And um, it doesn't take um, money per se, but it, it your time is usually priceless and uh, even more effective when we donate our time. So thank you for listening for us today and come back next week for our next segment, Maximize Retirement. This has been Maximize Retirement with host Sharon Rolf. If you can dream it, it is possible. Tune in next week as Sharon reminds us that living from the heart and creating a new and meaningful life is within your reach. Here on Sharon Rolf's Maximize Retirement. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.